Welcome to Chapter 4 of Surviving Statistics. We're continuing to discuss descriptive statistics, and in this lesson we're going to talk about measures of position, we'll talk about scatter plots, correlation, and skewness. When we're dealing with measures of position, we're dealing with two different things, both the position location and also the value at that location. In the previous chapter, we talked about the median, and the median is the 50th percentile. 50% 50 of the values are above it, and 50% of the values are below it. We often deal with the term percentiles when we're talking about measures of position. In addition to percentiles, we'll also use the term quartile and decile. And a quartile simply separates the data into quarters. And so you may hear the 25th quartile, the 50th quartile, and deciles will be 10, 20, 30. The median is the second quartile or the fifth decile or the 50th percentile. Now, in order to find the location, and again, we're talking about location to start with here, we first sort the data in ascending order, then, we use the formula that you see on the screen to find the location, again, not the value, the location of the whatever percentile you're looking for. It's n plus 1 times p, the percentile that you're looking for, divided by 100, a relatively simple formula. Before we talk about finding the location of a percentile, let me backtrack just a bit and remind you of how we found the median location when we were dealing with a set data set with observations that were an even number of observations. Remember that we ended up with a position that was halfway between one and halfway between the other, and we took the average of the difference. Well, we're doing essentially the same thing here. So let's see how this works. So we have a 12 uh, observations in a data set here, and the first question we're going to answer is find the location of the 25th percentile um, in the first quartile. So we have 12 plus 1, the number of observations plus 1. We're taking that times 25, the percentile that we're looking for, divided by 100, and we end up with a location of 3.25. And with the other example we see on the screen here, a location of the 90th percentile, 12 plus 1 times 90 divided by 100, we end up with 11.7. And so back to the first one here, the location of the 25th percentile is position 3.25. And we'll talk about how to find that value here in the next slide. All right, reviewing just briefly here that when we're looking at measures of position, we can find the location or the value. And the formula that we used right now simply finds the location. We have another way to find the value. Okay, so now we're going to find the value. So let's review what we just did. So we wanted to find the location of the 25th percentile, and we ended up using that formula with a location of 3.25. So the value associated with the 25th percentile is the number between position 3 and position 4, and it's actually going to be 25% of the difference. So the formula that we use to find the value is we take, in this case, the value at position number 3, which is 71, plus 25 percent of the difference between 74 and 71, and we add that and we end up then with a value of 71.75. In the last chapter we talked about the empirical rule, and the empirical rule assumes that the data falls along a normal distribution, which you see in the middle of the three curves here. And data isn't always distributed symmetrically, and so sometimes the data is skewed a little bit. And what we're going to be learning here in just a second is to determine how far the data is skewed. So the curve on the left you see here is negatively skewed, which means that the mean is smaller than the median. When the data is perfectly symmetrical, the median and the mean will be the same value. The curve on the right is positively skewed, which means the mean is larger than the median. In just a moment, we'll be talking about how to compute skewness here, but I'm cheating just a little bit here, and I'm using a feature in Excel's uh, data analysis tool pack called Descriptive Statistics. And I'm using the data called Pay Survey, which again is available on my website. It's the one that has the 421 values. And if you look at the mean and the median, you can see that the mean is slightly higher 
than the median, which means this is positively skewed. Now you'll see that Excel has computed a skewness value for us here of 0.89 um, and we'll talk about what that means here in just a second. So we can tell that the data is skewed in this distribution by simply looking at the mean and the median. They're not the same value, therefore we know there is some skewness. The actual value though of 0.89 is not a large number. In fact, we're really not truly concerned about skewness unless it's less than negative one or greater than one. That would indicate a highly skewed data set. We're going to complicate skewness just a bit by explaining that there are actually two different formulas we can use to compute skewness. Uh, the first one, which is the one that we would be doing if we were going to be computing it ourselves, is the Pearson's coefficient of skewness. Relatively simple formula. We take three times the difference between the median and the mean divided by the standard deviation. And so using the values that we can see from the descriptive statistics here uh, with that pay survey data file, we would have 3 times 1542 minus 15.24 divided by the standard deviation. And we end up with a completely different value than what Excel computed. But that value is, again, a relatively small number, 0.14925. And so they don't match. But uh, if you were doing a research paper, you would definitely signify which one you were going to be using, the Pyrrhus or the next one, which is called the software skewness. The software skewness involves just a little bit more calculations, and it's the one that Excel uses. And like I said, uh, as long as you indicate on your research papers which uh, skewness formula you're using, you shouldn't have any problems. I can't help saying it again, I love Excel. And uh, you'll notice that Excel has a skew function, and so you don't have to go through all the descriptive statistics that I showed you just a second ago, and we'll show you again. Uh, it is just the function SQEW, and then the range that you want to compute the skewness of. The descriptive statistics summary that I showed you in the previous slide is available in Excel, but it is a feature that you have to turn on. It's an add-in, um, and you can Google uh, your version of Excel and figure out how to add it in, but it's the analysis tool pack, and once you have that added, you can go into the data tab and choose analysis tool pack and choose descriptive statistics. You probably recall that uh, in the first chapter we talked about the power of statistics and where we really want to use it in the end is in inferring things or predicting things. And one of the tools that we're going to be able to use to do that is relationships between two variables. So let's just take a silly example here. Let's assume that we're selling lemonade on a street corner. And we would probably assume in this case that there might be some sort of a relationship between the number of glasses of lemonade that we sell and the number of people that walk past the stand. If we placed it in the middle of the desert where it's really hot, it might be a great location for heat, but if there's no traffic, we're probably not going to sell any lemonade. There's probably a relationship between those two variables, number of people that walk by and the amount of lemonade that we sell. And of course, the cool thing about statistics is we're not going to have to guess whether there is a relationship between two variables. There are ways we can actually do that. One way is to create what we call a scatter plot. And a scatter plot lets us plot the two variables together and see visually if there's a relationship. So with the example that you see on the screen here, we'll assume that we're, we're thinking there's a relationship between the temperature of the day and the number of glasses that we've sold. So we have a couple weeks worth of data here. We've recorded the high temperature and the number of glasses sold. Next, we're going to plot this in a scatter plot to visually see if there's a relationship between the two. With a small number of observations, we could easily create a scatter plot on our own by just plotting, in this case, uh, along the x-axis, the high temperature, and the y-axis, the glasses sold. We can draw a linear line between the two, and we can see, just looking at this scatter plot, that there probably is a relationship. The higher the temperature, it seems, the higher the number of glasses of lemonade that we sell. And of course, Excel, we're going to make this a whole lot easier, and there's other tools that will do scatter plots for you as well. To create a scatter plot in Excel, just select the two variables that you're looking for the uh, relationship between, and you'll find scatter plot in the charts group in Excel. The scatter plot allows us to visually see 
and assume that there might be a relationship between two variables. In this case, with the data, the number of glasses of lemonade sold and the temperature. Well, as you might have guessed, there's actually a numeric formula that we can use to compute that a little bit later. It's called the correlation coefficient. We'll learn about that in a, in a few chapters upcoming here. But just to give you a little bit of a heads up here, uh, if we were to compute the correlation coefficient between these, those two variables, we would end up with a correlation coefficient, or R, of 0.948, which is a very strong correlation between the two variables. Well, just briefly to recap what we talked about in Chapter 4, Surviving Statistics, we talked about measures of position and how to compute the location of a percentile. We also discussed that there's a difference between the location and the value at that location. We showed you how to compute both the location and the value. We talked about skewness, and uh, we can determine skewness by just looking at the median and the mean, but we also have a coefficient of skewness. We talked about the software method and also Pearson's, and then we talked about a scatter plot that allows us to see if there's a relationship or correlation between two variables. And remember, all of these lessons are based on my textbook, Surviving Statistics, which is available on Amazon. And do remember to check out my website for downloadable files, calculators, and other resources.